Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episodes of The Good, The Bad, and The Truth. It's your girl, Naya Angel, coming through with my co-host and homies for life, Mr. P-A-T and E-Man. What's up, fellas? What up? What's good? What's good out there? What up? up? You finally back. Oh, man. It's so good to be back. We've been on a little hiatus, y'all, but uh, we are back in effect. That's right. (laughs) I agree. Yeah, so we got we definitely got some uh interesting topics to discuss, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to jumping into all that. But before we do, our guy E Man has a special announcement he would like to make. I'm gonna throw it over to you, sir. Go ahead and do your thing. Yeah, so E Man has a lot of PSA, it, it, it's been a while, but first thing first, I want to say, you know, I'm glad to be back with my crew. You know, I'm super glad being back with my crew. Now, now we got some things we got to knock off on the list and whatnot. First things first and whatnot. Nick Cannon, you are a hoe for wearing fake dreadlocks over there at the VMAs. That's the first thing and whatnot. Yeah, I'm going at you, little nigga. I'm going at you and whatnot. All right. Next and whatnot. All right. I come to find out, reading an article, you know, it seems like the former mayor of Massachusetts and whatnot is in court right now. Said embezzlement and fraud and whatnot. I hope your ass go to jail oh, for the shit you did and whatnot. Cause you definitely deserve you definitely deserve all that and whatnot. So yeah. Also, this is not an attack with the LGBTQ community, but Lil Nas X, like the stuff that I've been seeing in the past few days with him with this baby bumping, whatever he did at the VMAs, y'all need to stop that shit right now and whatnot. Y'all just need to stop it. Please stop it and whatnot. Like, it just needs to stop and whatnot. I don't need to see another Photoshop with him with a baby bump and whatnot. And y'all think that shit's cool. It's not cool at all. All right. And last and final least and whatnot. I'm super psyched about this new Batman movie that's supposed to be coming out in the next few months. But just before... We even like even talk about that movie. I just want to let everybody know Ben Affleck is still a shitty Batman. And I'm glad there's a lot of people out there agreeing with me. So I have mercy. So (laughs) all I'm just going to say is this and whatnot. All right. I don't know the guy who's supposed to be playing in the new Batman movie as new Batman and whatnot. A lot of people are very excited about him. Robert Pattinson. His name is Robert Pattinson. All right. Robert Pattinson. So, my man, you have a huge job to do and whatnot. That means you have to put on a hell of a performance, a hell of a performance and whatnot to kick Ben Affleck to the corner and whatnot. So, and I'm probably going to be your toughest critic, but we're going to make sure and whatnot. Ben Affleck don't never put on a damn Batman suit. And this is the goal that we need to shoot for and whatnot for this new Batman movie. All right. So now we can get started. Boom. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, just want to give a a quick note here, as always, on the good, the bad, and the truth. Um, Please keep in mind, folks, that we are always going to give our individual opinions on any subject matter. It is never our intention to impose on anyone's lifestyle choices to each their own. And uh, with that, let's move into the first subject of the night, which is are artists like Ye and Drake good for hip hop culture or are they overrated? So we're going to start this off by throwing it to our guy P.A.T. to speak on the matter. What say you, sir? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So... I'll go ahead and just start this off by saying that Kanye West is most certainly good for hip hop. Now, as for Drake, I won't say he's good for hip hop, but I won't say he's bad for hip hop either. I know that sounds a little, you know, I I know how that sounds. It's kind of like I'm I'm riding the fence with when it comes to Drake. But, you know, I'm not going to say he's good for hip hop. 
I, I won't say he's bad for hip hop either. Now with Kanye, I've always liked Kanye's music. And with Drake, Drake's music has always been hit or miss for me. Just being real, I've never really been a fan. And I say that respectfully. His music just bores me. It, it bores me. And yes, I've taken the time to listen to Drake's music. I've tried to give Drake's music a chance. The fact of the matter is his music is just not for me. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, so but sorry not sorry. Off, so sorry to cut you off, PA team. So I just have a quick question. All right. Would you listen to Drake, Iggy Azalea? Go. <laughs> Man, you just put me on the spot. Yeah. So why yeah. he do you like that, sir? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just did the no. Well, I'm I'm well, of course I'm gonna be real with that answer. I'm I'm gonna say Drake because I actually have some of Drake's music. I have his um mixtape um so far gone. I think that that that's the mixtape um that he put out when he like was really you know getting on like that in the rap game so far gone i do have that and i i didn't even think it was a bad mixtape to be honest but um i actually like have his music i've listened i've actually taken the time to listen to his music iggy azalea nah <laughs> i never even like taken the time to actually like listen to any of her stuff really i mean i've i've kind of heard it like heard some of her music but i never really actually like really zeroed in on it and like listened to it you know what i mean like i just didn't i never took the time to listen so so, so drake i'm gonna say drake on that one all right so that basically means Iggy Zay, you need to quit rapping asap right now <laughs> Quit while you're ahead, child. I mean, hey, I, <laughs> I mean, if Quit. she wants to keep doing it, that's that's her thing. She needs, uh, you to know. Quit. I just don't listen to her, and it, you know, I'm not saying that to be disrespectful yeah, or anything. I'm is no disrespect. Like, you know, I have nothing I know. personal against her. You know, it is what it is. It's just I'm not a big fan of like this generation's hip hop. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I I say that respectfully. You know. I, I'm just being real. I'm not a fan. You know, there there are talented artists out there. There are talented artists of this generation. There's no denying that at all. But just overall, just overall, I'm not a I'm not a fan of you know the hip hop of today. Just being real. So going back to Kanye and Drake. So I listened to Drake's most recent album, Certified Lover Boy. That's quite a name right there. But um, yeah, that, you know, the album was boring. I mean, it, it was just boring. And for, for those fans out there, I, I, I did take the time to listen. You know, uh, nobody's hating. Because, you know, every time you don't like somebody's favorite artist, you're a hater. You're just I hate that up. shit right there. Look at the irony there. I hate when people say you're a I hater agree. if you don't like someone's shit. That's stupid. But okay, I oh yeah, I it's real stupid. That. It's just like I, I I just don't like that person's music. Just like there's there's artists that I like that you might not like their music. I'm not gonna call you a hater. I mean, you know, we're all entitled to to like and dislike what we like and dislike. It's life. You know, so, you know, what with, with Drake, his music just doesn't have the type of energy and substance that I look for. Like, me, I like my rappers with more gusto. I like my rappers with more power. They got to be more powerful. Drake, to me, just doesn't have it. Not saying that he's not a decent rapper. Because I, I will admit he does have his moments. But overall, overall, I think he is underwhelming, especially considering all of the hype and hoopla that that's around this guy. So that that's my take on on Drizzy Drake. Now, when it comes to Mr. West, I've been a fan since his college dropout days. 
I can still think that's his best album. That's just me. But hey, oh, uh, I was I would say one of them. I, I like late um, registration. I really well, I like both of them. I like both of them. I could comfortably say that college dropout and late registration are classics. I could say that comfortably. Kanye has some good albums after those two, but those two albums right there are classics. Now, as for Kanye and his artistry, I mean, he, he's made it clear that whether it's within music or even outside of music, he's the type to push the envelope. Now, I don't like to get too heavy into these artists and, you know, what they say or do outside of their craft, but we know how Kanye has been perceived lately, you know, from him saying that George Bush doesn't care about black people to him taking the mic away from Taylor Swift and basically ruining her moment to him supporting Trump and wearing the MAGA hat all the way to his infamous is slavery a choice statement. So, you know, with all this in mind, we, we all know that Kanye West is one hell of a dude. Now, I could see why people would say either him or Drake are overrated or both. I, I pretty much said why I think Drake is overrated, but Kanye, in my opinion, hasn't been making his best music lately. His more recent albums, in my opinion, are just a reflection of, you know, in, in my opinion, him, you know, not making his best music. But I will say that his most recent album, Donda, or Donda, have you say it? I think Donda was an OK album. I, I thought it was an OK album. It was a little bit too churchy for me, but, it, you know, it was OK. Now, See, the, that's what happens when you date and marry a Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, <laughs> you might you might have a point there. <laughs> you, you might have a Damn, point. Bro. <laughs> but um, now there is one song in particular that, that I do like. And unfortunately, it's actually not on the album. Um, I guess it was um, it was leaked, and it, it wasn't put on the final version. But um, it's the song um, "Life of the Party," and it has um, Andre Three Thousand on it. And that song right there, man, that uh, yeah, that that song like just I think it's one of the best songs out right now. Just being real. Now, Andre and Kanye both did their thing on that song. And I mean, the production, the beat itself is just, it's, it's just tough. The beat's just really tough. That song in particular honestly gave me goosebumps. And when music does that for me, that means that that music has struck a certain chord with me. So I'm going to just throw that out there. I, I really like that song. I, I really wish that song was actually on the album, but you know, I digress on that point. So I think Kanye has been good for hip hop. He's contributed a lot musically, whether it be on the production side, the lyric side or both. When it comes to both Kanye and Drake, I can say that they both made a lot of rappers feel more comfortable to be themselves. Because if you think about it, prior to Kanye, I mean, you had a lot of fake gangster shit out there. You know, every, every rapper that was coming out was, was a drug dealer. Every rapper that was coming out was a killer. Everyone was tough. It, it seemed like rappers felt like they had to like fit a certain box or just be hard in order to be respected. And I think Kanye changed that by basically helping to bring back what we call, quote unquote, backpack rap. I, I think Kanye shifted it and, you know, shifted the landscape in that direction. You know, rappers who came after him didn't feel that they needed to put on a front. Basically, it, it, it was cool to be a nerd. You know, Kanye was coming out with the sweaters and the, you know, like, like he, he was just, he was like a nerdy dude. He, he was really like the average ordinary 
dude out there, you know, like a college dropout. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. College dropout. Yeah, we can even say college student, somebody who's in college, you know, Basically. but yeah, the college dropout, you know, he, he was relatable. He was relatable to the, to the, to the average dude out there, you know? Um, and I think, I think Drake provided some of that too. He brought some of that to hip hop too. Um, you know, because with Drake, <laughs> with Drake, Boom. you see that he's comfortable in his own skin and he's not trying to be this tough guy, which I'm cool with that. Like, I'm all for rappers being themselves. You You're know, talking don't... about that guy who played a character in Degrassi. That's the same guy we're talking about. Yeah, that guy. But he's being himself, though. <laughs> I'll give him that, you know, because if, if he was trying to be a gangster, I, you know, then then I'd say something about that. But he's not putting on this front like he's, you know, he's being himself. He's I don't, I don't know. I mean, everyone called Rick Ross out, you know, that that situation when they found out he was a correctional officer and whatnot. See, that was a problem. In my opinion, that was a problem because like he lied about it. He should have just been honest. Exactly. He should have been honest up front. Like yeah, the he... difference in that situation. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. That. But the difference in that situation is exactly what Pat just said. He should have just been honest about it up front. And it really bothers me because Rick Ross music, a lot of his music, I actually really fuck with. But yeah, the I like some is, of his music. He stole that man whole life. <laughs> the yeah. shit he rapping about <laughs> is not his to rap about. He <laughs> no. literally, he didn't just oh, say, my. I'm a show homage to do. This man literally started rocking the same type of beard as that man. That's some weirdo shit, bro. I ain't gonna that's, lie. That's I'm not weird. gonna lie. That that's some true shit. Even though Push It is like one of my favorite Rick Ross songs and Dice Pineapples too. That's Listen, a dope song. Some of those, some of those songs go. Or some of those Rick Ross albums are tough, especially certain songs. Like a lot of his like laid back kind of stuff, like Port of Miami too. It's a lot of songs on there that I really rock with because like the feel of it is just kind of like chill rap. Like the the production and the beat of it, I appreciate the artistry behind it because like I'm one of those hip-hop fans who actually recognize the production and the effort that go into the beats and the transitions. Like, I listen to the whole songs. And Rick Ross produces a lot of music that give you a kind of feel when you're listening to it. It's almost like a, like a yeah, bitch, I'm rolling down Miami with money in my Maybach kind of feel. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Maybach and, music. <laughs> right, literally Maybach yep. music. But like at the same time, I get so mad at Ross because I'd be like, yo, all you had to do was be you and I can respect you. But because you weren't, I can only go so far with my respect. <laughs> If that makes sense. No, I, I feel saying? you on that. You know, yeah, I think if, if he was honest, if he was just up more up front and just been like, yeah, I was a correctional officcer, then, you know, I don't think it would be as big an, of an issue. But right. the fact that he, you know, lied about it, that just that that puts some dents in his armor because it's like, I, OK, dude, like mm -hmm. you, you're, you're rapping about X, Y and Z. But, but all of a sudden we find out that, you know, you was, you was one of them boys and, you know, in, in the system, you know, you was a correctional officer and I'm, you know, I'm not knocking that. That's a, that's a job. It, it's all good. You know, just be real about it, you know, and, but you know, he, he didn't do that. So that, that's kind of where the, the issue was when that happened, but yeah, his music though, I mean, you know, he's got some bangers, you know, he, I mean, Brick Ross got some bangers, you know, and I'm, I'm not like heavy into his music like that, but there are certain songs that he has that I really fuck with. Like I really fuck with it because, like I said, they're they're bangers, you know. So that's where I'm at with with him. Um, but yeah, with my whole Kanye and Drake spiel, I mean, I pretty much said what I had to say in regards to them, their music, the mo the most recent albums that they put out. You know, just my thoughts on on all that. So we could go on, you know, throw it to the next person. All righty. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and speak on this matter real quick. So um, for me and again, for our listeners out there, the question was, are artists like Ye and Drake good for hip hop culture or are they overrated? 
So my answer is yes, they are good for the culture. And in my opinion, overrated is a state of opinion, no pun intended, right? Because at the end of the day, whether or not you totally rock with their work, they, sp- they still put out a quality that's much better than most of today's average rappers. True. I mean, True. to be quite honest, their version of mediocre is better than some of these rappers out today. Good or great work. <laughs> right. True. Now, Very true. if we're talking their yeah. moments of like, quote unquote, cooning, right, a.k.a. Yay being a make America great advocate and Drake with the whole blackface situation. OK, in both instances, they were clowns for their participation. It's that simple. Right. But at the same time, hip hop is not universal as far as connection goes, i.e. some artists and their views and viewpoints people will connect with and agree upon and others they won't. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the artist himself doesn't have quality or herself. For example, a lot of people don't agree with Lupe's politics. Okay, but anyone who says that Lupe is not a dope fucking rapper is an idiot. And and so those (laughs) two things don't necessarily have to go together equivocally, right? They don't have to be on the same page. So especially because they respect their craft enough to not just put out any bullshit like most of the artists do today, which I haven't heard anyone who heard both albums say, okay, they just threw that shit together, right? Like they, you can hear, even if you thought, okay, this could have been a little doper. This could have been a little more excitement. This could have been a little bit of this or that. Okay, cool. It wasn't just no thrown together bullshit like any of these little whatever name rappers have been putting out for like the last five years. So, okay, if you ask me, would I rather have the yays and the drakes of the world over, say, the little whoever's of the world, I'll take yay and drake any day. Because, I mean, okay, let's keep it a buck, right? Both of their recent albums had some songs that were bangers or that were okay, right? And then they had some that were like, uh, bro, what? Like, what you doing? Where, where, where were you trying to go with this, right? But for me, the production and lyricism on both were up to par at minimum, in my opinion. And for that, they've at least shown effort, which I'm sorry, is not commonplace anymore in hip hop. I mean, y'all know how I feel about people in hip hop respecting their craft, right? Because I feel like this notion that you should have respect for what you do and you should have respect for the reason that hip hop was even created has gotten on the back burner. People don't give a shit anymore. People really like you can tell in arguments and conversations with people and you'll be like, yeah, such and so so more though. I literally, this is no bullshit. Again, this is in that rap group that Pat and I are in. I saw a meme in a conversation where a dude posted that the fucking Migos was a better rap group than Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, I man. You know what? I've seen that before, too. Oh, man. I lost my shit. Y'all, oh, I lost my right. shit. I completely so, so, lost so, before, it. Before, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm no, going to tell you everybody like this, right? Who in the hell would name themselves Take Off, Offset, and what's the other ones called? What's his name again? Uh, uh, take off, offset, and uh, Quavo. Uh, Quavo, right? Quavo, yeah. Y'all sound like a bad Quizno sandwich and whatnot. <laughs> you call Look, yourself a rap group, man. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's it, it's so off- it was so offensive to me that like I almost took it personally. Like seriously, like I was in my feels in that moment. That's a lot of young. Like real young. Yeah, it'd be someone real young. You know what? I don't even know how old they were, but I will say that I think Pat, you're right, that it was like definitely 
like the 90s, 2000 generation of kids? Because you know, it's a lot of them in that. It, it, it must they be, be yeah, saying well, off the wall the, shit. It, it's oh, yeah. More like the 2000s. Amen. So we, I think we invited you to the group. If not, I will. But in that group, you'll see a lot of like, oh, y'all old heads think this type of shit, right? Yeah. When the reality of it is, no, it's just quality versus bullshit. And their oh. argument was that the Migos made way more money than Bone Thugs and Harmony. I don't give a mm. fuck. Whoa, and that whoa, could be whoa, argued whoa, too. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, I mean, whoa, we're whoa, looking whoa. at their careers and it, come on Period. now. Do you know Period. Bone Thugs and Harmony still performs and whatnot. Yeah. I got a close friend who lives in Wardorf that actually no Bone Thugs in Harmony has done mm-hmm. songs with Bone Thugs in Harmony and actually performed on stage and opened up for Bone Thugs in Harmony and whatnot. Yeah. So it's just it was crazy. And they it sold was, a was, lot too. They right. sold and, and that's what I was but saying. They so first do of all so many shows. Yeah and but but and 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 my thing was first of all if you don't recognize the important uh, the importance of having respect for your craft, whether you're talking about hip hop or not, that enough in itself tells me the type of person you are. And I can only go so far in that conversation with you. But to actually imply that a group like Bone Thugs and Harmony are somehow second to the Migos just because of album sales or record sale or what the fuck ever is so ridiculous and outlandish to me that I just went the fuck off. I just lost it. I was like, I can't even fathom what would make you say that crazy shit out of your mouth other than you must not have ever even actually heard one Bone Thugs and Harmony song because one, you could take the worst Bone Thugs and Harmony song, and it's better than any song the Migos have ever produced. I can say that with full confidence. I 100% can say that with full confidence. I challenge any one of those weirdo Migos to prove me different. Y'all shit ain't fucking with Bone on any level. I don't care. You can call me an old head, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit. Kiss my ass. That's where what, I'm at. What okay? That's how I feel song about is it. out there, though. I don't even know. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, it's not even worth your time to even. Let me say, let me explain this to you. I'm gonna keep shit a buck. I have never heard one whole Migos album. You know why? Because I love myself. And if I wanted to torture myself, because if I wanted to torture myself, I could find different ways oh, to shit. myself. I would do blurpies oh. for an hour and a half straight oh, if I man. wanted to torture myself did, before I would listen to a whole Migos. Did you, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I, heard that. I love That's myself why. too much. I respect that answer, me. though. I, mean. I, I love oh. myself too much. Got to respect the time. Yep, yep. Whoa. But anyway, you know, I I digress. The point that I was making is there's no more respect in hip hop for certain people and appreciate their craft and trying to put out quality music. But from a few artists, I don't believe in my heart at all that Ye and Drake tried to put out the quickest thing possible and didn't care about whether or not there was some quality to it. I feel even if you don't 100% rock with one or the other, they definitely tried to put out quality music in these, these, these recent albums. It's just some of it. Like I, I wholeheartedly agree with, with PAT. I actually love that Drake is, who he is unapologetically. He not trying to be something different as Pat said, he is who he is. But I also found that some of the songs were just a little boring to me. They just fell a little flat. Kanye's album, I liked some of it. And then the same thing, some of it fell a little flat. But if you consider the fact that their worst is almost always better than most rappers who are out today's best, then I have to say, yes, they're good for hip hop. Okay, plus one other thing, and I'm gonna wrap this up. Okay, 
when you consider the timing of everything from that aspect, there's some exciting things happening in hip hop right now that they're contributing to. For instance, AZ mixtape is out, right? I haven't heard all of it. AZ, you know, yep. AZ. From, the legendary yeah, AZ. Na, yeah, Nas homie and shit. AZ, yep. you know AZ right, man? Yeah. So his mixtape is out and I haven't heard it yet, but I have heard that it is going off. Not that I'm surprised, right? I'm not surprised. That man is a legend. Like, Pat said, right? Yep. And then you have Kendrick's album that's coming out soon. I'm not going to make any assumptions, but I've not really heard a Kendrick album where I was like, this is trash. I haven't loved every single song that I've ever heard of his, but I've never heard anything where I was like, oh, this is trash. And then J. Cole's off season was lit. Okay. I'm a J. Cole fan, but it's still that aside, if he had to put I out something that was trash. Yeah, it, me too. Yeah, if, they call if, Kendrick if he, a dope. Yeah, they are. They both are. So when you look at everything that is happening right now in hip hop, you got fucking um after the versus battle, Puda. For those who don't know, Puda is a nickname of Jada Kiss. Um, you got Puda and the Dipset planning on going on tour. You hip hop is getting back to. An exciting era right now. Oh, and, repeat that and, what you, and so you said. You know, um, Puda and Dipset are planning to go on tour. See, they, see, they announced that after the verses. You know, I knew something was fishy about yeah. that. I knew something was behind that whole. It was all systematically planned. Oh, of I course. Oh, yeah. That, of I course. That's, that That's how it works. I knew it. Man, That's how it works. Man, you know, man. not I, just I, them two. Um, uh, also, uh, Jeezy and Gucci Mane, and you know they had a beef for years, but they're planning on going on tour right now. Oh, they're going on tour together, like yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said, that's I'm not how saying artists are it, using it, the verses. Like, that's good because it, yeah. it generates, you know, interest, and of course, exactly, you know, it creates hype, and you know, yeah, so exactly. That's, that's a good look. Yeah, right. I agree. So I feel like. Overall, I know I've dragged on here, but I'm wrapping up now. So I feel like overall, they are good for hip hop culture. I feel like overrated. Mm, Some of their music can be into each their own. Some people may feel they are. Some don't. Right. But as far as are they good for hip hop culture? Yeah, they are because they are putting out some level of quality music. And right now, the environment of hip hop is thriving. It's winning. So I appreciate their efforts towards that. So that's my opinion on the matter. We're going to go ahead and throw it to E-Man and wrap us up. Again, the question is, are artists like Ye and Drake good for hip hop culture or are they overrated? What say you, sir? All right. Towards this being, so before we start, before we start, but um, I will tell everyone like this. I was never a Drake fan and whatnot. Just uh, before I even start anything and whatnot, I have never been a Drake fan. And yes, he's boring to me. And I don't like the guy whatsoever and whatnot. I really don't. And it's not because he's light skinned and whatnot. I just don't like the guy and whatnot. <laughs> so, I got to put it out there. Everything. Everybody feels like I got beef with light skinned dudes. He can be bro. too light skinned. I, I just ain't got no ready. beef. With, I, I just got to put it out there because everybody feels like, man, you feel like you got beef with like everybody, especially these light, dude, like these light skinned dudes and you dark skin. I'm just like, man, I ain't got no beef with no light skinned dudes. I just don't like the guy <laughs> and whatnot. But I just had to put it. He, it's not because he's light skinned and whatnot. Just don't like him and whatnot. Now, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, towards his being overrated, mm, a little bit. Yay. You know, for Drake, you know, for Mr. West and whatnot. I mean, Mr. West has been a producer. So towards him rapping, I I give him his respect and whatnot because college dropout was dope. I ain't going to lie. I got the album. I still got the album. And that shit's dope and whatnot. Late registration wasn't it wasn't my cup of tea. There was a few songs I liked on it. But, you know, I've never disrespected Mr. West because he puts out, you know, Good music and whatnot, you know. Is Kanye a little bit overrated? Mm, everyone has their yes or no. 
in my eyes, I feel like he gets the hype to be overrated. But, you know, to me, I feel like Kanye's just an average rapper and whatnot, you know, hell of a producer. But to me, an average rapper and whatnot. But but I love the guy and whatnot. That's why I give him a lot of respect. So but I would say Kanye is definitely towards what he puts out. He's definitely there because a lot of people definitely want to work with Kanye. And we're talking about actual artists and whatnot, actual people and whatnot, you know. So I give them that respect and they all come together and they make good music and whatnot for Drake and whatnot. <sighs> man, I wish someone would just slap him sometimes. I don't know, man. Just just one person just be like, you know, he just say something, just go pow and slap him in his face and everything. So I can see it on television and I can laugh and be like, yeah, nigga, you deserve it and whatnot. That's just me and whatnot. That's just me. Right. You know? That's so just weird. me. You know, that's just me. Cause I don't like it's him. So and weird, bro. Man. Yeah. So, you know, I always thought that Drake was a copycat of Lil Wayne and whatnot. I still believe that. Everyone can fight me on that, you know? Mm, but um take. <laughs> yeah. Um, he tried to play like he was like R. Kelly doing this whole rapping and singing thing, you know, you know, and I think on his first mixtape and whatnot. So I was like Mm, you ain't fooling me. So, but um, Audrey just like what would I'll tell everybody like this? I would have actually been a believer of Drake if he would have gotten his team to go diss Kendrick Lamar. All right, over the King Kuda beef, like like that diss that um K Dot hit over there with um at Drake and whatnot. If he would have came up with that. And got his team and be like, we about to go after Kendrick Lamar. I'd be like, you know what, brother? I'm a, I'm a respect your team for getting you together to go write some bars to go after Kendrick Lamar. I give you the respect. That don't mean I like you, but I would have gave you the respect. But no, nigga, you went over there to go pick on Meek Mills and whatnot. A nigga who who's a who's a battle rapper, but ain't really he ain't that fluent with his bars and whatnot. You gonna go pick on a little nigga and whatnot. I thought whoa, you were whoa, a big whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. What? You said Meek? Yeah. Meek Mills? To, to wars where he, like, I ain't got no disrespect to Meek Mills. He got good music. But, like, to, to, towards everything else, he, right now, he's a little nigga right now and whatnot. Like, music's good, but because of the whole him and his Drake with beef with Drake and whatnot, Seem like his his. Oh, you like talking about down. the Meek Drake beef specifically? Not yeah, his it's rap the beef one. Not yeah. Okay, because I yeah. thought you because I, I was about to say what? Nah, <laughs> oh, that was actually no, a no, funny no, beef, no. Though. He's an excellent rapper and whatnot, but his stock I, fell down. I was going to say he's a battle rapper. Yeah, like his legend, stock basically. fell down because of because of him supposedly messing around with Drake and whatnot. See, that was his fault messing around with a kid. Who got a whole team that write his bars for him and help him out and whatnot. Damn, That's his not, fault. A, not a team of ghost writers. Damn. So, but <laughs> well, but, that happens. That happens with some of these rappers. Like some of them actually will get a team of ghost writers. There's mm -hmm. multiple writers in that room. Mm -hmm. No, I believe you because you know Cameron was a ghost writer at some point. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, he's a ghost writer too. Mm -hmm. So, but um, so in my thought. And whatnot, you know, because there's not much I got to say. I, I'm going to just say, you know, you know, based upon me, I wouldn't say my weird conspiracy, like theories and whatnot. But supposedly, you know, when I think this is like, you know, the 20th like anniversary of September 11th, it's also the same anniversary, you know, when Kanye said, you know, George Bush don't like black people. And it was also the same time he dropped the same album. And then Katrina hit, and then we got a whole new hurricane that hit and whatnot. And then Kanye's in the news with the same thing. So it seemed like the same four events that happened when that 20 years ago when that album dropped is basically the same thing that's going on right now. You know, that's just me following the dots and whatnot. But I don't disrespect Mr. West. You keep doing your thing and just keep being you and whatnot. And that's what I respect. But to Drake and whatnot. Nah, I'm going to just let you know that basically I don't have no beef with you. I will let you know that very clearly. 
I have zero beef with you and whatnot, you know? All I'm just saying is you can go get your team of writers and whatnot and continue making your boring music and keep being boring and whatnot. But my ass will not listen to your boring ass and whatnot. And it's not because you're light skin and whatnot. I'm going to just put it out there again and whatnot. I have no beef with light skin dudes at all and whatnot. I just don't like Drake and whatnot because you're a copycat of Wayne and you don't want to admit it. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Very interesting points. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Eman. Thank you, Mr. PAT. I'm sorry. I'm only laughing because of your emphasis on it. It's not because you're light skinned. It's not because <laughs> you're light skinned. <laughs> it's just, it's I just, just want to let everybody know. I ain't got. It's just such a weird I, point I feel like that'll be like the first thing that come up. Place. Oh, you don't like Drake. Well, nah, you know what's funny? <laughs> Some people would actually come to the conclusion that, oh, he he must hate this dude because he's light skinned because some people draw that conclusion because, you know, the colorism is a real thing. Colorism is a real thing. Yeah, but it's just so it was so random. That's why it threw me off. Mm -hmm. I I I love it. I I love Canadian people, by the way. They don't. My aunt lives in um, Toronto. So it's not because he's a light skinned Canadian. That is not the reason. But okay, I got you. It's not because, you know, he's Canadian. I just don't I ain't got I just don't like you personally. And it's not because you like skin because you live in Canada, fool. It's just simply okay. I don't like you. Why not? Okay. So that's what everybody gonna think because like, oh, you don't like Drake? What? Because he's light skinned and whatnot. I'm like, man, please, man. Okay. Got you, sir. Thank you. Yes, on this show, there's no colorism. We ain't discriminating against light skins, and there's no Canadian hate. <laughs> We don't hate the Canadians at all. Oh, y'all yeah, are gentle and nice. I right. Y'all Canada, are gentle man. and nice people and we love y'all. Y'all so kind. And uh y'all got beautiful women also you. over there too, also too. Beautiful women. Yeah, also. everybody's really friendly and y'all got mm-hmm. universal insurance. So mm-hmm. all right, anyway, moving on <laughs> to the next subject. Um, let's talk about uh something that's actually very serious. Um, it's, uh, it's been all in the news and uh, it's definitely a tough one, but you know how we are here on the good, the bad, and the truth. We don't shy away from having the tough conversations. So the next subject is, is the Texas abortion decision along with other states anti-abortion laws fair? So I'm going to go ahead and start this off for us. And I'm going to say the answer to that question is unequivocally no. It is not fair. Not only are these laws not fair, but they're also not constitutional. They are literally reversing everything that is the foundation of Roe versus Wade. For those of you who do not know what Roe versus Wade is, it was a landmark decision by the U.S. Supreme Court, and they ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. Listen to that second part very carefully. Protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion. Here's the most important part without excessive government restriction. This new Texas mandate is violating that decision and women constitutional rights based on the second part of that statement alone. Because if you look at what this new law says, it basically says that women as early as six weeks pregnant cannot have an abortion once a heartbeat is detected. Now, the problem with that is that medical experts and legal experts have even testified 
that as early as six weeks pregnant in that stage of development, it doesn't even have a heart yet. So the heartbeat is a part of the growing embryo, but the heart itself is not developed. And let me be clear. I am not going to the ins and out of when the heartbeat and all of that stuff. I'm not a doctor. I never said I was. I don't pretend to be one. But so now we're going to start ignoring the medical experts opinion in this regard when it comes to this subject. Do we ignore them when they say don't proceed with a heart surgery because this can be the result of it? It's ridiculous. Not only is it ridiculous, it is 100% something that is being imposed on women because of the opinions and the lifestyle of conservatives in charge. It's complete and utter bullshit. It is a drastic measure that came from overly dramatic conservatives in power. I literally pulled these words from a site on this matter. And it was, and and of course we will share the link. And the site was, the title of the, the, the article was the top eight myths about the new text and abortion law. They call these things myths. And they said the Texas law has two main parts. Listen to what their literal words were. It's illegal to kill babies with heartbeats and individuals are allowed to report violations of this law, something that pro-abortion law enforcement has refused to do. Those are some of the two most dramatic, ridiculous statements I've ever heard in my to kill babies with heartbeats. They're not even clarifying that that it, 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 there are embryos inside of a stomach that we're talking about. They said it's illegal to kill babies with heartbeats, as if people who are having abortions are standing up, standing outside with live babies trying to get them killed. It's ridiculous. It is emotion that these people are operating from. It is their pro-life style that their conservative pro-life style, excuse me, that they are trying to enforce without any consideration of what the woman has actually been through. That is unacceptable. Most importantly, it is in direct violation of a constitutional right. They can't just do whatever the hell they want to do. That's ridiculous. It's unacceptable. You have women who have been raped sometimes by people they knew and family members who are already trying to get past that event in itself. Now you're telling them, not only do you have to just deal with that, But suck it up and have the rapist baby on top of that because otherwise we don't like it. Who the fuck are you to say what they should or should not do after such a traumatizing situation? How dare you? It's insane to me. Regardless of the reason of why the woman decides that is the right decision for her, it is the right decision for her. And when you take a look at some of the horrendous things that Republicans have said in regards to abortion, you can't deny that this is about the conservatives in charge trying to enforce their rule. I'm going to read out a few. One of them is when Huckabee, Mike Huckabee, a Republican compared Planned Parenthood to a heroin dealer. He said Planned Parenthood is purely a health care provider any more than a heroin dealer is a community pharmacist. A heroin dealer. Well, 
And I'll, then, I'll, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm actually going to talk about that because um, there's a lot of secrets about parent, parent, Planned Parenthood that a lot of people don't know about okay. like the whole operation. But I just want to I just want to say it, but I want you to continue. OK, and that's fair. And, and you know, to each their own. But like it's, it, that's that's just one thing. Oh, trust me, mm-hmm. I'm not done. And right. then you have. Donald Trump, who said the problem that I have with Planned Parenthood is the abortion situation. It's like an abortion factory. Here is one that is very interesting. A black Republican, E.W. Jackson, says Planned Parenthood has been far more lethal to black lives than the KKK ever was. I want y'all to think about that. Planned Parenthood has been far more lethal to black lives than the KKK ever was. Has he not heard of Rosewood and some of the other atrocities, Emmett Till and some of the other atrocities that live people faced, live human beings faced? How dare you? Not to mention, let's talk about the rape comments related to abortion that the Republicans have made. Jody Laudenberg said in the emergency room, they have what's called rape kits, where a woman can get cleaned out. What the fuck are you talking about? A rape kit doesn't clean out a baby that or an embryo that was a result of rape. Another guy says Our campaign bumper sticker should be, if babies had guns, they wouldn't be aborted. Make that, that doesn't even make any fucking sense. How, what, what, what is he talking about? Another one, this, this one takes the cake. Brian Kerkaba said, obviously rape is awful. What is beautiful is the child that could come from this. Listen. It is quite clear that what this is about is about conservatives in power enforcing their will on women's rights to choose. It is preposterous. It is unacceptable. No one has the right to tell women what to do with their bodies in any of these situations. You don't see them saying you are overweight, so you have to get, uh, 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 what is it called? The weight loss surgery. How come they're not so avid on all of these other areas where they claim this is just about making money? Isn't the weight loss industry just about making money? Isn't the healthcare system in general about that? If not, why aren't we born with universal healthcare like so many other superpowers in the world? In in Europe, they're born with universal healthcare. Many countries. If it's not about the almighty dollar, if it's not about the almighty dollar in general, what are we talking about? Why are you focusing on this one subject if it's not for the fact that it goes against what you believe? And so you're trying to impose yourself. Let's look at the state where this happened. Let's not be let's not be um, purposely ignorant here. We're talking about fucking Texas. They refused to integrate their power system with the rest of the United States. So what happened as a result? People literally almost froze to death last fucking winter. We're talking about a state that does not give a shit about what is in the best interest of anyone besides the people that live in their state and the people in charge are deciding what that means. So. To summarize my opinion on the matter, the whole thing is based on causing anarchy because of their individual beliefs. Because that same article says that doctors and providers, this is, this is the latest article, the one from the Texas Tribune, 
talking about the law and the effects of it specifically, said that doctors and providers in Texas plan to remain at whole women's health clinics in Texas until 11.59 p.m. because tonight is when the law go in effect. Tuesday, to provide abortions, or excuse me, 11.59 p.m. Tuesday, to provide abortions before the law took effect and the clinic waiting room was filled with patients and their loved ones, all of whom they couldn't see. So now what you have are people who are not going to be able to be seen, who may be pushed to find alternative means outside of the proper centers who could have cared for them, which can put them in situations where they're getting dangerous procedures now. And I mean, it sounds easy to judge these women and say, okay, don't, don't, just don't have the baby, give it up for the adoption. Who's going to speak on how atrocious the adoption system is in this country? Do you know how fucking difficult it is to actually get approved to adopt a child? There are women in children's shelters all across the country that can't hold even close to the amount of women and children that need sheltering within their state. Adoption agencies have some of the strictest requirements. It's difficult to be a foster parent these days. Yet you're pushing that people can't do, these women can't do what they decide is right for them. What if the, the environment that they're bringing that child into is with crazy drug dealers or, or crazy family members that's beating the woman the whole time? You don't know everyone's situation. What are the solutions to all of the unadopted children? By the way, the largest numbers and the most difficult adoption procedure are almost always for adopting Black children. Is that a coincidence? Is that just a, a, a just so happens to be the case? Come on, man. This is bullshit. So my stance on this is quite clear. No, these laws aren't fucking fair, but more importantly, they are not constitutional. Period. That's my take on the matter. I'm going to toss it to Mr. PAT. What say you, sir? Woo! That was... <laughs> Sorry. Man. That was another one again. Yeah. yeah that was, was like, oh, I'm, shit. I'm going to ice it. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, man. Woo. That was, that, was, that was dope. I mean, you definitely brought it on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. But, um, so, man. Well, so my, my take is that I don't think it's fair to answer the question directly, I don't think it's fair. However, I will say that I'm not pro-abortion, but I wouldn't say I'm completely anti-abortion, but I'm not pro-abortion. I would say that I'm more pro-choice. Now, I do understand that there are extreme circumstances where an abortion might be necessary. And I also understand that myself nor other men should try to control a woman's body. That, that's not our place. It's not my place. And it, it's, it's not other men's place. It's not other people's place. People ideally should be able to do whatever they want with their own body that that's just how i look at it you know th this is a very complex issue very complex issue as we all know abortion didn't become legal until the roe v wade decision back in 1973 and if you really look at that i mean if i mean 1973 that was that's just a couple generations ago that we're talking decades it, it what like it wasn't too far off you know like it wasn't so long ago we're just talking about 1973 now some people could be like yeah you know that that's we're talking decades here 
But if you really look at it, we're not talking a century. I mean, you know, so we're just talking a few generations, really. But before then, before the, the Roe v. Wade decision, there have been times where women took it upon themselves to abort their own babies. There have been situations where women have used coat hangers to kill their own baby. And th this is stuff I read, and I've read some other extremes also. But That's also of, true. Of course, that one really stuck out to me. I was like, damn, like women were resorting to that? Oh, okay. You know, but, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, my thing is making abortion legal created an alternative outside of you know, extreme methods like that. It gave women a legal way to abort a baby that they didn't want. With when the you, proper medical attention, by the right, way. The, right, the proper medical attention, exactly. When The thing is, when you ban something like abortion, it could possibly create a situation where women will go back to resorting to other methods to get rid of their baby because if it's not legal you better trust and believe they're going to go about it in different ways to to because all because there That's there true. are there are going to be women who just don't want to have a baby you know they might have an unwanted pregnancy and some of them will go you know to to certain lengths to get rid of their baby so i mean do we really want to make something like abortion Ill illegal i mean or do we want to ban that i don't i don't think that you know no i don't think that's the best idea you know because those extremes will most likely not be safe and it will be dangerous for the women and the, the baby i'm gonna say this and i know i might catch some flack for this comment, but I think anti-abortion tends to be more so for white women. And I say that because white people are- no, that's actually true though. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying this because white people are, are actually losing their numbers. It's been stated by various sources that by the year 2045, white people will be a racial minority here in the U.S., that is also true. They're actually yeah. going extinct at a very rapid rate, like right. extremely. So, right. Exactly. So someone can say, you know, yeah. And that someone is me. I'm going to just put it out there that banning abortion. Yeah. That that's more so for white women that that's basically telling white women like, nah, you need to have these babies. <laughs> like you do not abort straight up do not abort your baby you keep that baby or else you know it's kind of one of those things but on the flip side someone could say banning abortion is not about race now that that might be true to some extent but come on now when we look at some of the history of this country in regards to planned parenthood and the eugenics movement it's clear that there has been an effort, and one can argue still is an effort, to get rid of black people. Anyone can look up the white supremacist, Margaret Sanger, and I see that. I was just going to get into that also, too. Yeah. But yes. Anybody could look, look her up. We're talking about Margaret Sanger, who, who's a white supremacist. We could look her up and see how she wanted to exterminate black people. The creator of Planned Parenthood. Right. She was one of the founders of Planned Parenthood. So with all of that being said, I see a ban on abortion as something that is more so for white women. Of course, we, we can look up the stats and see that black and brown women's numbers are pretty high when it comes to abortion. What You know, white women's numbers are there too, but I think the powers that be would rather see those numbers drop let's be real they have no vested interest 
and having black and brown women keep their babies, they'd actually prefer true. they'd actually prefer that black and brown women not spread their seed. So if, if you know, let, let's say, you know, OK, they ban abortion. Trust me, if a, if a black or brown woman wants to go abort that baby, they'll figure it out. They'll figure a way to do it, you know, legally. And that's true. Those, those women won't get in trouble for it. That's true. Let, let's just be real on, you know, about that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm actually have- not disputing that because that speaks to the point of the adverse effect that I was talking about is that the adoption rate for black babies is way worse than it is for babies of any other race. Right. That's any true. other race. That's true. And and so the adverse effect the effect of that is exactly yeah they don't care about black women okay and 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 for all these people who are pro life and again i also agree pro choice is pro the woman's choice but what is the answer for all these little black babies that no one's rushing to adopt that end up just being another victim of the the economics and the society that they grow up in and another head in their prisons Let's do, talk do about really the effects know that of that answer because I actually know the answer because I have I have I have a good close friend that um, works in adoption. But yeah, but yeah, well, the- that's going to be one person, right? That's I, and I'm not saying that that person doesn't have an answer that you might find suitable, but there is no doubt that children who grow up a certain way tend to walk a certain type of path. How many of these? foster and adoption children, especially black ones, actually have the same opportunities to grow up to be successful citizens versus growing up to be people that populate these private prisons that they make money from. Mm -hmm. They don't actually become successful at all. Many don't. That's my point. Right. And and a lot and a lot of those kids, they end up not just in broken homes, they end up in abuse homes. Some of yep, them end up dead. Too. A lot of That's them end up exactly homeless. That's exactly my point. Um, it, the list even goes on. But uh, the abuse, especially sexual abuse, that's the big one that happened to a lot of black children and whatnot. Like the yeah. biggest one. Yeah. And they will do things. And I repeat, they will do things towards even mess up the paperwork to make sure, you know, they don't have no contact of their parents and whatnot. So... They, sure. they really pushed for black parents who can't take care of their children. They really push the option of adoption and whatnot, you know, mm-hmm. versus yeah. as those, you know, who are white and whatnot. This is true. I'm not even lying about it. this is true. You know? Yes, I agree. I've had, I've had I've had several conversations with people who work in adoption. I actually have a close friend that works in adoption, you know, and she answered all my questions of the same assumptions that me even working with kids who's actually been in group homes and, you know, kids being adopted. So, yes, this is all true. Sure. But I'm going to let you yes. continue, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Apologies, PAT. No, 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 it's all good because we're, you know, it, it, it creates a larger dialogue, you know, because like I said before, th- this is a very complex issue. I mean, it, it shouldn't be. We would think that it, it, it shouldn't be complex. It should be pretty cut and dry. But the reality is it's not, you know, very cut and dry. It, it, there's a lot of layers. There's a lot of complexities to this whole thing. You know, and I, I you know, I've touched on the racial component, w- you know, which you guys have spoke on further with the adoption system and, you know, the abuse that goes on and, you know, things along those lines. But yeah, like I was saying, you know, so a, a ban on abortion, really, that that's for white women. Like, if, if let, let's keep it 100, 100. This is for white women. You know, people could say it's for all women. I, I mean, fine, we could say that, but it, it's really for white women. They're basically telling we, white we women to, to have, they're telling white women, have those babies. You better not get rid of any of those babies. That, that's pretty much the message they're sending. You know, anybody else, women of color? Oh, yeah, well, you know, yeah, there's a ban on abortion, but we'll, you know, we'll figure out some loopholes for you because we want to get rid of your babies. But white women, nah, you keep you keep your babies. That's pretty much what that's about. But um, 
racial stuff aside, once again, I don't think banning abortion is fair. It, it you know, it's it's just not fair. Like I said before, I'm not I'm not pro abortion. But at the same time, I do understand that there are extreme cases. There, there are certain extreme cases where I'm not going to be anti-abortion. I'm, I'm for people governing themselves. I'm for self-governance. And with that includes being able to govern and control what you do or don't do with your body, with your own body. I'm pro-choice. And would even say pro-life in some senses, but I'm, I'm pro-choice. Abortion, as we all know, is a really touchy subject. I think myself and others who might be against abor abortion have a problem with it because of some of the reckless and irresponsible behavior that comes with it at times. There, you know, because there are women out there who do use abortion as a means of birth control. You know, there's people out there who are having unprotected sex all willy nilly and, and recklessly, and then end up getting in situations where abortion becomes an option. And they're basically using abortion as like, as a form of birth control. And I've heard many stories. I've read many stories. You know, I've heard of people getting like six, seven abortions. You know, I, I've even heard people out here in the real world say with their own mouth, with their own mouths that, oh, yeah, um, I, I don't like to have protected sex. I don't, you know, I don't like to have sex with condoms. So and then my, my question is, OK, well, so what happens when you get pregnant? You have an unwanted pregnancy. Oh, I, I just get an abortion. You know, it, it's just like one of those things. Are you, know, you, are you, do you honestly feel that that is the most common story with, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but are there statistics that show, or is there even any kind of evidence that support that a large number or majority of abortions are just because a woman didn't feel like having a baby? Well, no, I'm, I, I, I'm just wondering. No. And I'm not saying that, you know, there's these large cases or, anything of that nature. I'm just saying that those are situations that happen. How, mm -hmm. how many times it happens or whoever's doing it or it, the fact is it, it exists that I'm just speaking on the fact that it's something that takes place. Of That's course. I understand, I'm but, but, it, and I understand your point and I want to make clear, I'm not saying you are saying that that is the majority at all, but for me it's one of those like, um, people feel like one bad apple spoils the bunch situation. I, I, for abortion, it's too broad of an issue, in my opinion, to highlight that particular area. Because, yes, there are going to be people who abuse any system. But if we start breaking down whole systems because some people abuse it, well, shit, we got to get rid of EBT. We got to get rid of WIC. We got to get rid of Basically. all different kind of programs I mean, that help people who are in need because some are going to abuse it. Right. Well, and yeah, and, that, and I think that for me, that's where it makes things complex because, of course, we, we do need those things. People do need help. You know, so just because there are people who abuse those things, it doesn't mean we take we just take it away because there are people who need it and who actually use that those things responsibly so exactly. and that's where the complexity comes in because yeah you have the people who are who are reckless and irresponsible and you know it actually affects other people but at the same time there's people who you know like i said are are responsible and you know who aren't abusing the system mm -hmm. and you know so we don't just take those things off the table you know because then the people who are responsible they feel the pain behind that, you know, right. and I'm not for that, so, but I'm just speaking to the fact that these types of situations exist. You know, there's always degrees to everything because yeah, there are women who absolutely do need, you know, they do need abortion. Like it's something that, you know, the option needs to be there for them. You know, for, like I said, the extreme cases, 
where, you know, they would have to abort their baby. Of course, I'm speaking on the other end of the spectrum where there's, you know, some recklessness, and irresponsible behavior behind it. But yeah, of course, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's a lot of women doing this or most women do it. Like, I, I can't say that, you know, because, I, I, you know, I just can't because I don't know so many women who have acted out so recklessly and irresponsibly like that. So, you know, I just can't say I just can't say for sure. But I know I've heard people speak in the way that I mentioned before, where they just, you know, oh, yeah, I'll, you know, I just abort, you know, I just get an abortion, you know, like I, it, it's just like, I, you know, I don't want to have sex with condoms. And when I when I do find out that I'm pregnant, I just go to to Planned Parenthood and that's that. It's mm-hmm. just, I'm just like, oh, OK. I mean, you know, that, that's just true. never met one woman who said that. Maybe I just have the luck and the benefit of just knowing some really upstanding women, maybe. And, and I'm that's, that's what it is. Cause you yeah, know, because I mean, I've, I've never because I know women who've had abortions. And not ever was the reason, oh, I just didn't have a condom or didn't feel like, so I said, fuck it, I'm just going to, because any woman who's gone through the procedure, and I actually have because I was raped by a 27-year-old man, um, I've, I've not known any woman who was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go and have this abortion because I decided to have sex without a condom. And yeah, the procedure is so fun that I'm going to just go have this support. Check. That procedure is horrible, even when it's done in a proper facility. And that and, and see, that's the thing. Like, I don't even know. I, I'm not like fully informed on even how the procedure, how that even takes place. Like, what do they do? Like, I'm, so when when I hear stuff like that, I'm just like, oh, so we we just doing that. Like, it's just that's- something that. It's like a kind of get out of jail free type card or some shit like, you know, that's um, why it's hard for me to believe that 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 is so frequent as people would like to think it is because that procedure is a surgical procedure. People have to actually be watched and et cetera. Even after the procedure is done, the facility is not allowed to immediately release the woman. They have to execute a certain amount of hours of monitoring her to make sure she's okay. She has to be put on fluids in certain Mm -hmm. places automatically. Like it is a surgical procedure where the party is in a a lot of times, most often it happens in a hospital. Even though you may go through a facility to set it up, the actual event itself can be scheduled in an actual hospital. Because right. they want to properly monitor the woman afterwards. It's like other outpatient surgical procedures. It's, it's not a walk in there, something happens in five minutes, women walk out type of thing at all. Right. It's, yeah. it's not. Right. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I agree. I, and I believe what you're saying, you know. Um, and honestly, I don't. These types of cases, what, what I just mentioned, as far as like the, the recklessness and the irresponsible behavior, I like I don't, I don't even think it's a majority of of abortion cases, to be honest, like a majority, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just mentioned it because that, of course, is just something that's there. And also, it, it's not to necessarily even point a finger just at women, because w- let's just keep it 100. There's men who even convince you know, women to get an abortion because there are times where, you know, a man's and a woman, they're having unprotected sex. She tells him, oh, you know, I'm pregnant and he might not want the baby. And he, and he goes and convinces her, hey, go get this abortion. And cases like that happen too, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Like I said, complex issue all around. Absolutely. It's a very complex issue. And let me just say one thing that I want to make clear. I do not for one second think that you are anything other than an upstanding guy. I want to make that clear. I definitely think that you are an an upstanding guy. And my points that I'm making about this women 
going to randomly get abortions because they're having sex, which you're speaking on, having sex without protection, which you're speaking on. I'm not saying that you think that women are just out here running wild doing that. I wanted to make clear. I was just giving some side thoughts on that matter. Yeah, yeah. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I know, you know, um, because I know me saying that, um, yeah, women could hear that. It, and even men can hear that. And they're like, dude, what, what are you saying right now? <laughs> but I'm just like, this is shit that happens in real life. I've, I've actually heard people say these things. So I was just talking about that. But, um, you know, I know this doesn't speak to the majority. It's not something that is going on across the board. It's a it's a it's a just very multi-layered. It's a multi-layered issue. It's just one of those things, because, again, you guys have touched on adoption and um, the foster care system and how it, it, it's a lot, there's a lot going on with this. So, you know, and I, I knew speaking on abortion, I was just like, oh yeah, this is going to be a hot topic. I mean, it's a hot topic as we all know right now, everybody's talking about it, especially because of what's going on in Texas or what, what went on in Texas. And there's other States that have banned abortion as well. So it's a, it's a very hot topic and, you know, for just reason. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your opinions on the matter. We're going to go ahead and throw this to E-Man to wrap us up. And again, the question was, is the Texas abortion decision along with other states' anti-abortion laws fair? What say you, sir? Well, we know the laws are not fair. I'm going to just put it out there and whatnot. You know, it's it's definitely not fair. So I'm just letting it. So it's not fair. All right. But before I even get into it and whatnot, towards anything I say, I'm just letting everybody know. Everyone knows I love women and I respect women. All right. So just so I don't want anyone, everything I say and whatnot, just don't never lose your mind off what I say. It's basically all my thoughts and research and opinions towards everything I've said when I share it, all right? So it's definitely not fair and whatnot. We all know this is unconstitutional, you know? Pat also said a whole lot of things that I was actually going to say, especially with the whole um, Planned Parenthood towards the founder and whatnot, towards, you know, um, being a, what's the word? What's the term I'm looking for? Um, 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 white supremacists and whatnot, you know? So, so that's the reason why it was there. It was basically to, you know, keep black women, you know, basically stealing their fetuses. That was a plan. That was, that's how Planned Parenthood started, whatnot, you know? So, and to tell everyone, they're still continuing that practice today, but they're doing it under different pretenses and whatnot. So they're they're still they're tr they're still moving on towards their goal, but they're going about it a different way and whatnot, you know. Because everything to it's all about customer service, you know. How to make a customer feel comfortable and happy to get whatever you need from that customer, you know. And towards you know what all the things that Pat was saying, that's all true. I was actually going to say that, but that is all true. Especially, you know, how the white race is actually becoming more and more extinct. And a lot of white women are actually incessing with more, not just black men, but also more and more interracial. That's why there's a lot more interracial couples going on at the moment. You know? And, um, and this is, and the reason why abortion is so heavy of a topic because simple fact is a lot of people don't know what they do with those unborn fetuses and whatnot. Now, don't be shocked, but I'm going to let everyone know. So once you get an abortion and whatnot, once you give it away, that becomes government property and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but it is. So. They can use those fetuses for, I would say, vaccines, which they have actually done that before. They use it for research and whatnot, which is true. 
Mm -hmm. There's plenty of research articles out there towards what they use those features. Because basically, because once you let it go and once you basically, like once you go through abortion, while you fill up all that paperwork, if you read the paperwork correctly and whatnot, basically you're letting that go. And because, you know, anybody can get it, which the government contains it and whatnot. So they've also put it in food also too. I know that sounds shocking, but they do that too and whatnot, you know? That's why when you read a lot of food labels, that's why they have certain things that many people don't get towards these natural flavors or all those other chemicals that's in your food and whatnot, you know? And I'm not going to say, you know, abortions are bad, abortions are wrong, and whatnot, because I tell everyone I'm more pro-choice. I don't care what many people do, you know? You have your own free will to choose what you want to do and whatnot. You know, but the thing that bothers me the most is not about the abortion. It's the abuse and the rape that goes on with women that they don't even want to talk about and whatnot. You know, that includes also even um, boys being also sexually abused also, too. All right. And and most people don't get like, how does that wrap around abortions? I would say this. Right. If you look at statistics about women being raped, oh, it's pretty high and whatnot, you know, you know, and a lot of women choose not, you know, to have a baby by someone they've been raped by, you know, because it's a, it's a really huge trauma linking experience, you know, because if they give birth to a child, it's, 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 I wouldn't just say it would be tough. I want, I don't want to use the word hard, you know. But once a woman and mostly also men can go through pretty traumatic experience, it's pretty damaging and towards its healing from that process, it's extremely hard and whatnot. You know? like, but that's what they don't want to talk about, you know? Because that's how everyone, it's, I don't even think it's even about abortions and whatnot. I think they're just using abortions to cover up basically their psyops of what, you know, what they actually do with those fetuses and whatnot, you know? Facts. And, and, and when you look at what, like, towards, if you look at everything that goes on in this, I don't even want to use the word matrix, but when you see everything that goes on, especially in the U.S. and whatnot, I tell people, ask yourself and think about this, right? Do you feel everything you're doing is for your own self-interest? Are they building you up to be better people in society? Or are they taking something from you and whatnot? Because for them, they always will say, your safety matters the most, but they're always willing to take something away to create more safety for you and yep. whatnot. That's right. And this is and this is the and this is one of the main decisions that they're doing right now and whatnot, you know? Because even though they go with this bill and whatnot, they're still going to pick and choose. They're still going to go after black women and whatnot. But the thing about what it is, is they're going to throw harsher penalties, like more penalties on white women and whatnot. So they can still get what they want because they're always going to figure out how to get what they want and whatnot. This is how the U.S. is right. It's not even about the laws. It's not even about the bills. It's not even about the laws that they pass and whatnot, you know, because certain states can pass certain laws, you know. And the reason why, you know, it happened somewhere in Texas, because Texas is not even part of the U.S., by the way, and whatnot. You know, they actually had a conjunction to be part of the U.S. and whatnot. So Texas can leave the U.S. as it please, because it's in the state constitution of Texas. That's why Texas is called the Lone Star State and whatnot. You know? And what's because I met I had a client that I met who actually lived in Texas, in which they actually told me that the Texas flag holds higher than the US flag and whatnot. That's how much power one state has in the US and whatnot. You know, one state and whatnot. See, all the other states have to go through all this other stuff and whatnot. That's why you don't hear too much about, you know, the same abortion stuff that's going on in Texas and other states. Can other states do it? 
yeah, but you'll see how far it'll go and whatnot, which is not going to go far and whatnot, you know? It's not going to go far at all. But, you know, just to, you know, and my thought, but, you know, everything else was said, but I just want to hit some points that wasn't said, you know, that at the end of the day, it's not even about the abortion one. It's all about what they can take from you and whatnot. So they can infuse in your mind that, oh, what we're doing seems safe, but it's not. So they can control who you are as a person, you know? So now you have now broke the law of like, you know, your like being pro-choice towards, you know, my freedom of speech, my freedom of assembly, you know, and, and almost like, you know, my freedom of religion or spiritual practice is what I call it and whatnot. And once you start taking things that you told me that you're giving to me naturally for my freedom of will to be part of this so-called democracy, you know, now it's making me question, like, what are you really up to and whatnot? Because it seems like all you want is basically my flesh, my skin, and anything else that you can keep taking from me and whatnot, you know, every single day. You know? And it's worse because they don't just take it from just women. They're mostly going after the black woman because the black woman is God, because that's how the universe was created. And because that's how the universe created, they want what they can't have. And the only way you can pull that off is writing, doing stuff like this in this matrix to get what you want and whatnot. So that's all what this is. It's about trying to get what they want, but still, still control the whole narrative, you know, of what's going on, actually, you know, that's that's. That's just the end goal behind, it, you know, and I just want to end my thoughts on that. You know, it's it's really sad. It's just really sad because the real issues. Nobody talks about. But they always want to use something like this to divide everyone away from the actual real issues. And that's the shit that really pisses me off every single day. You know, and I'm going to just end my thoughts on that. Same here. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, folks. So moving on to the last subject of the session. And the question is, will companies be positively or negatively affected by Joe Biden's vaccine mandates? So I'm going to go ahead and lead us off on this one, fellas. And for me, it's quite simple. Um, I would say that on this one, I don't have a stance that leans way more than the other um, because the mandates aren't directed at all businesses. They're directed to the government and the healthcare industries. But my initial thought is that it definitely negatively affects those two entities, obviously. In other words, it's my understanding that Joe Biden's mandate specifically says that anyone who is in the healthcare industry, so that's hospitals, or anyone who works for the federal government is required to have the vaccine. So here is what the CNBC article says are the key points. It says President Joe Biden's last vaccination push is the most aggressive effort yet by his administration to get the raging coronavirus pandemic under control. Again, this is the article's words. It says federal employees, federal contractors, and healthcare workers at facilities that receive federal funding must show proof of vaccination with no testing option. So in other words, this means that if you work for the federal government in any way, whether it's in a healthcare industry that receives federal funding 
or you're a federal employee or you're a federal contractor, they are taking away the ability to just do weekly testing and are forcing the requirement to be vaccinated. Now, let me just make clear. I'm not saying that the numbers aren't significant because it's mm, a whole mess of people who are federal employees and federal contractors, right? But what I am saying is it looks like that mandate is centralized to that group of people. Now, does this change the fact that I am opposed to forcing people to take the vaccination? Yes, it does. And the reason I'm opposed to that is because it is their constitutional right to choose whether they want to or not. Just like in the case of the abortion, we cannot just start picking and choosing what constitutional rights we want to uphold and which ones we don't. Do you know what kind of world that creates for us? That is the first step to a society where it's just, I'm going to do whatever I want to without consequences. And who you think going to be the most affected group by that? Black people. Let's keep shit above, right? Black people want to face the, the consequences of creating a society that picks and chooses which constitutional rights to follow more than any other group. And I'm not saying that I don't care about other races or cultures. Of course I do. But we're here on the good, the bad, and the truth. And anyone who listens to us know what we're talking about. We're talking about how these things affect the Black community. And the reality of it is, this is in no way, shape, fashion, or form a good situation for anyone in the black community, federal or not, federal employee or not, because the implication of this is we don't give a shit about constitutional rights. We're going to mandate what we want to happen because we want to push this vaccine agenda. Now, let me be clear. I am not speaking on whether or not the vaccine works or doesn't work. And my personal opinion, whether a person wants to receive the that vaccine or not, is their fucking business. Okay. My point that shit is, don't work. I don't pick and choose. I feel you, sir. I, my point is, I don't pick and choose which constitutional right I want to be ahead, upheld. All constitutional rights need to be upheld. Now, If people want to say, well, there are some constitutional rights that are very against Black people and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, well, let's start looking at the entire situation in general, right? Let's start looking at the entire constitution in general. But what you're not going to do is start picking and choosing, especially when Black people are not in the appropriate seats to be able to speak comfortably to what does need to be changed, no, I'm not for it. And no, there's not going to be a positive effect of this. And it's not because I have some agenda about vaccinations or conspiracy theories and all that. It's not about that. I don't give a fuck about that to a certain extent. What I care about is when Right. And, you know, to each their own. I'm not saying you're I'm not saying that these theories are wrong or right. My point is the person's right to choose whether they want to do it is the person's right to choose. And what Biden is doing is saying, okay, if you're in the federal government, you're constitutional or you work for the federal government or a contractor or our healthcare provider that receives funding, your constitutional right no matter belongs, no matter matters to me. No longer, I cannot get this shit up. No longer matters to me. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. So honestly, that was quick, but that's my stance. To summarize, I'm over all this bullshit about the forcing of the vaccines and trying to force people to take them when people can choose and elect to do so or not do so. I mean, there are people who choosing not to do so for religious reasons. They're going to start forcing those people to do so as well. And and for me, the other part that's significant of this is their whole premise is that the vaccine saved lives and et cetera. 
Okay, what about the people who contacted? What about the people who contracted COVID after they've been fully vaccinated? I actually Correct. personally know a few who have been fully vaccinated who have contracted COVID after that. What about that? Correct. So now you're breaking people's constitutional rights on a premise that has been proven to not be accurate. Unacceptable. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. It's that simple. Back. People got to open their eyes. This is bullshit. Forcing people to do anything against their constitutional right is bullshit. All politics aside, Straight that bullshit. is my main issue. It is bullshit. Straight Those bullshit. Are, yeah. And th- that's really it. That's my thoughts on the matter. I'm going to go ahead and toss it to Mr. P.A.T. What say you, sir? All right. So overall, I think the effects of this mandate will be negative. I mean, this whole get vaccinated or else stance that Joe Biden has taken is problematic for various reasons. Companies have to enforce this mandate. And as we all know, this affects the employees. And I'm just mentioning companies because even though some companies don't necessarily have to enforce it, some companies will most likely, you know, get into a place where they will try to enforce it. I think they're going to try to follow suit, basically. You know, Joe Biden coming with this mandate it started something it 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 it, it just it it it's like a shockwave basically because now businesses are going to try to enforce a mandate it's basically going to be get vaccinated or lose your job that type of thing so now people who didn't want to get vaccinated have to choose between getting injected with something they don't want in their body or losing their job. Unfortunately, we're at a point now where people's livelihood is being threatened. Now, people can say that the virus itself is threatening people's livelihood. And while that may be true to a certain degree, the fact is people are more likely to recover than actually die from the virus. Yes, people have died. But the death rate doesn't compare to the survival rate. It's not even close. For anyone who wants to look those numbers up, it's not even close. But instead of encouraging people to build up their immune system, they want to encourage people to to get the jab. And we know why they're doing this. And I'm going to say some stuff here. And look, somebody, you know, if, if people want to say I'm putting on the tinfoil fitted hat or whatever, or I'm, I'm coming with the conspiracy theories, put it I, on. Know, I don't give a fuck. Like, put it on. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to have to put on the tinfoil fitted hat because we know why they're doing this. You know, building up your immune system and fighting off viruses and recovering on your own is not profitable. It's just not profitable for the healthcare system. And it it doesn't fit the agenda. I'm going to just say it flat out. It doesn't fit the agenda. Basically, they're not in the business of caring. They're just in the business of treatment. You know, because recovering from from a a virus or a disease or whatever, it's just not profitable. So they don't want you to recover. They don't want you to get cured. They just want you to come get treatment. Because that, that's where the money comes in. That's where the profitability is. Treatment. Also, let's be real. The reason why the establishment wants everyone to get vaccinated is because they want to see that everyone is on board with being injected with anything. This pandemic, and yeah, I said pandemic, is a trial run. It's a trial run. Yeah. 
It, 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 it really, it's a trial run. Correct. If everyone gets the jab, then that means eventually people can go get lined up to get a chip injected in them. That, that's where this is headed. Correct. I don't give a fuck about who says it's a conspiracy theory. I already know it's not, but I don't give a fuck if somebody wants to throw that out there. You know, go for it. I don't, like I said, I don't give a fuck. It, it is what it is. Th- this is not, at least for me anyway, th- this is not about being an anti, a quote unquote anti vaxxer or a quote unquote pro vaxxer. But at the same time, I see this issue in the same way that I see the abortion issue. This is yet another way for the establishment to control people and to dictate to people what we can or can't do with our own bodies. Mm -hmm. So because of Joe Biden's vaccine mandate, I mean, even though it's on the federal level, like I said before, I think it's going to trickle down to the non-federal businesses and it's just, it's just going to trickle down. And with that being said, we we're going to see people quitting their jobs similar to what happened up there in New York in one of the hospitals where several of the staff members quit. So because of that, delivering babies had to be put on pause and the link will be in the description for those who want to read that article. So imagine if this is happening at other hospitals too. And imagine how many other essential workers might quit their jobs as well. That's going to be a serious problem. I'm telling y'all right now, it's going to be a problem. And let's talk about something that will happen. Lawsuits. Yeah, lawsuits. That, that's, oh, that's there's what's plenty happen. of lawsuits going on right now. Right, there's stuff. There's lawsuits going on now, and there there will be more to come. And there's a report that the LAPD, LAPD employees are suing the city over the vaccination mandate, and there will be a link for that in the description as well. But that's just one example. Now I'm pretty sure. This is going to be a trend all over the nation. This is this is what's going to happen all over. Employees will be suing. There's going to be class action lawsuits. Tons of them. Yeah, that that's coming. That's coming down the pike. So a lot of businesses and institutions could suffer from people quitting and or suing. Now, I I say it all remains to be seen, but pushing a mandate like that, it's a problem. It, as we all know, it's it's unconstitutional and, you know, it's just, it's just very problematic. It's a very problematic thing. Now there are, there are obviously people who don't want to get vaccinated And they shouldn't be placed in a position where they have to go get vaccinated for whatever reason that may be, whether it be religious reasons or any other reason. If somebody doesn't want to go get vaccinated, that that should be their choice. And testing, too. And testing, too. And testing. Yeah, that included, too. That that should be a choice. You know, I'm I'm pro choice with this too. I mean, if you want to go get vaccinated, hey, do your thing. You want to go get tested, do your thing. Do you your don't want to do it, do that too. Like, I mean, but for for it to start being a mandatory thing, man, fuck that. Like, for for it to be mandatory, come on, man. Like, we this is the direction we're going in now. But you know, there's a larger agenda at play. You know, it's just something bigger at play. So, you know, I already spoke on the negative, but when it comes to, I guess, a positive, I mean, I don't see it. I really don't see it. You know, and speaking of of a large agenda, I mean, we're pretty much headed in a direction of tyranny. Now, that that might be a strong word for some folks out there, 
No, that ain't a strong word. That's what we're headed to. Well, yeah, for some for some folks, not for us, you know, not for people who are, you know, we're we're about reality, but you know, um, you know, it, it's it's headed in that direction. You know, thing, things are just gonna get more oppressive as time goes on. There's already a depopulation agenda in effect and a police state on the way. I mean, it's already here. But, you know, it, it's just going to grow. It's just going to metastasize, basically. It's going to grow larger, you know, and it's going to be ready to inflict its will on anyone who dares to question authority and possibly revolt. What's going on in the world today is not by accident. All, all of what's happening right now, it's happening on purpose. There's a reason for everything. Every, every single thing you can think of, there is a, there is a reason. There, there are no accidents. It's, it's going on on purpose. The fact is the writing has been on the wall. What's going on in the world today is a reset. And the powers that be are making the moves necessary to make sure that the masses fall in line. So that, that's really what all this vaccination stuff is. Because let, let's be real, these people don't give a fuck about anybody's health. They keep saying it's about your health and your safety. Get the fuck out of here. It's not, you don't give a fuck about anybody's health and safety. Let's just keep it real. This nation does not give a fuck about any of our health and safety. This nation doesn't have feelings. It has interests. They don't care about people's health. They don't care about people's safety. It's about their interests. It's about gaining more control. You know, it, it, it's about taking away our freedoms slowly but surely. That's what it's about. You know, so th for, for me anyway, they could fuck out of here with all this bullshit about our health and safety. Because I, I know that you're not about our health and safety. But of course, you're going to say that because that, that's going to that's gonna make people feel good. You know, that, that's just going to put people back to sleep, basically. And unfortunately, there are too many people out there who are gullible enough to believe that. So, yeah, they're going to they're going to say that. But some of us out there know you're, you're full of shit. So I'm going to just leave it at that. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. I feel you on that. I tell you that much. Mr. e -Man, I'm going to throw it to you to wrap us up. And again, the question for our listeners out there was, will companies be positively or negatively affected by Joe Biden's vaccine mandates. What say you, sir? I feel like all companies, you know, are being attacked. You know, this fool went on his speech. Yes, I call the president a fool and whatnot, because to me, he looks like a guy who might croak at any minute in any time. But I told everyone in previous in a previous episode and whatnot, his best best political move thus being president when he slipped when he went to go on air force one i still love it though i still watch the video i keep laughing every single time so before i get back into you know um my opinion or thoughts and whatnot i just want to say i love women and whatnot so i'm just putting it out there and whatnot so um this is going to hurt a lot of people, not just companies, a lot of people. Now, me going back on this fool of fool, this fool said that every company that has at least 100 people must get vaccinated and whatnot. So since COVID's been going on, this shit got more rules. I never knew a virus had rules and whatnot. You know, I thought it just had symptoms and whatnot. This shit got more rules than anything else I've ever seen in my life and whatnot. Right. Like, COVID got more rules to the point where they're telling people that, oh, COVID lives. 
that this virus lives on surfaces. Oh, man, you got to be six feet apart. Now, six became three. I was like, hold on, time out. How the hell six become three? Where'd you come to that conclusion? One night? Then, you know, they'll go over there and say this, this, blah, 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 and all that stuff, you know? And, and you know, they just keep continuing with this, 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 this thing they keep calling the game and whatnot. But before I continue on my thoughts, right, there is a um, Netflix, I think, I'm not too sure if it's a series or a show. It's called Stretch Armstrong. It's actually in the kids section of Netflix and whatnot. And um, there's a nurse that I follow on IG. Her name is like Thick Nurse. And um, she's an actual nurse who's in California. This show is called Stretch Armstrong. Um, I think it's in the kids section. It's actually, it looks like a, it's an anime series and whatnot. They're actually showing basically, you know, a factory or some type of pod where basically people are lining up, getting chipped and whatnot, you know, and, you know, and it's free and whatnot, you know, and basically, you know, you can use your chip you know, to go shop in stores and do all those cool things that everyone feels like, you know, they're losing their freedoms of and whatnot. And it's very interesting how this show is on Netflix in the children's section and whatnot. You know, that's the fear that I keep having because that's how they keep trying to get the kids into something interesting so they can get parents to agree to this sick thing. You know, and it's... and. And that's that's the that's the one thing that I you know I'm hating, and it's bothering because when this whole vaccine came out, it was like okay, they kept naming different age group and whatnot. Once they got to oh yeah, twelve and older, between twelve and eighteen, oh you can go get a vaccine. Parents would line up getting their kids vaccinated. Doesn't bother me. That is your choice. You know it's your free will. I don't fight anybody on their own free will. Now, here comes the thing. Many people don't know that the next thing they're going after right now is the 12 and under and whatnot. So now they're coming after the babies. You know, they're coming after the youngins. They're coming after the kids that I enjoy laughing the most with, you know. And what's this is something that I'm not going to agree with. Because why? Because Mr. Fool over here is just saying what he wants to say and people are buying into it whatnot you know people are buying into what cnn is saying and whatnot but yet people are forgetting a few things that many people tend to forget that joe biden the hoe kamala harris you know and all her little buddies and whatnot in the beginning they stated because trump made the vaccine we ain't gonna get the vaccine but Little did I know that, you know, a few of them lined up on national television, including Mr. Dr. Little Midget Fauci also lined up and got supposedly his shot on television and whatnot, you know, but these are the same people that stated they wasn't even going to get it and whatnot, you know. Then I heard the Pfizer guy, he hasn't got his, but everyone's defending it like, oh, he's going to wait and whatnot. No, he didn't get it and whatnot, you know, and he stated he didn't and whatnot. He stated it. So that's the things that keep bothering me, you know, they they trying to tell you this, but they're trying to tell you you're excluded from like we're excluded. You got to do this and whatnot. I was like, hold on, that don't make sense. We all live and die the same way. What makes you better than me? Oh, because you're the president or because you have money. See, there goes the separation thing right there. See, that's the kind of control that they really want to take over, you know, your mind and your consciousness. See, and once you once you have a strong conscious, they always want to attack you because the simple fact is, you know, you keep talking that gibberish, you know, you know, that conspiracy talk and whatnot. You know, that's that's what they try to attack you with, you know, and. All this shit is silly, you know, because here comes the thing, right? People are telling me, you know, about, you know, not just the mask mandates and whatnot, but the mask they say they're recommended. So I, I bought the, the, the N95 mask. Do you know what it says on the box? The box says that this mask only helps from certain contaminants and whatnot. It don't even say it protects you from viruses and whatnot. Then 
Then it says, and this is on the warning label. The warning says itself is, please do not wear this mask to protect yourself from any viruses or diseases. It will result in sickness or in death and whatnot. You know? Yeah. Because if a kid, because, and many people don't know, in 2020, there are certain states that kids passed out while they're in school doing physical activity. A lot of schools and a lot of people covered it up and no one said anything about it and whatnot. A lot of people got sued. And I tell everyone there's been a lot of class action lawsuits going in many different states and whatnot. Many that they're not talking about, you know, at all, you know, because everyone's been glued to CNN and acting like everything hasn't changed yet. There's been a whole lot going on. They have not said shit about anything and whatnot, you know, and the cra- and I'm going to tell you about what's the crazy thing about it. There are companies, even if they have less than 100 employees, they're actually just as a group, they're just saying, you know what? Before you can work here, you got to get vaccinated and whatnot. So now you are breaking people's, like, not just, you're not just breaking the law because there's no law behind it. You're not just going beyond people's, un- like, towards, you know, just, Saying their un, like their um, constitutional rights don't mean anything, you know. You're telling these people they have no will and whatnot because you're willing to give them a little bit of money and whatnot, a little bit of money, a little bit of money, so they can pay their bills. But yet you will fire this person at any time, any given moment and whatnot, and that place can be vacant at any time, any moment, even if they die and whatnot, you know, and. I tell every lot of people is, you know, those who are leaving their job because of that, I tell them that's your free will. And I've been really respecting people behind that and whatnot, you know. And there's there's been hospital shortages when this thing started and whatnot. And I feel like that's what they've been telling people. People's been like, you know, in the you know, ICUs and whatnot. I've been hearing stories about the things that they're doing in the hospital and whatnot, you know, a whole lot of things. And a lot of them's not good, but a lot of thing, and I, and because of that, I have nurse friends, and I'm not trying to, I'm trying to hold down the conti, um, just making sure you know I'm not breaking any type of conti, um, contialities, you know, on while I'm talking on the mic. But I can say this and whatnot. What they're doing is murderous, you know, and it's not right at all, and that's what's bothering me every single day, you know, because we already know it's going to be a reset. You know, and I'm also told people in 2030, oh, that's when the shit's really going to begin and whatnot. You know, this is just like PAT said, this is just the trial run. You know, they're trying to figure things out while they're doing the trial and whatnot. Then when this thing's over, what do you think everyone's going to do? They're going to forget about it. Go back to their daily life. Wait until 2030 hits and whatnot. You know, I told people wait until 2023 hit and whatnot, because many people don't know when 2023 hit. It's going to be an election year and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Remember what happened in 2020. Remember how everyone was attacking everyone and whatnot. Remember how everyone's talking about all these mail-in ballots and whatnot. See, now we're at 2023, getting ready for a 2024 election. It's about to be mayhem and whatnot, you know? And just like Nine Angel said about the truth of people being vaccinated and actually getting COVID, there's been more people who've been vaccinated who's actually gotten COVID and whatnot versus those who've been unvaccinated and whatnot. They actually just been attacking people who are unvaccinated because they're making the right, because they're choosing not to be vaccinated and whatnot. That's the big issue right there. You know, it's not even about the test. It's all about you taking the vaccine and whatnot. And that's why they keep talking about, oh, because you're unvaccinated, it's your fault and whatnot. What do you mean it's my fault and whatnot? How is it my fault? Did I bring COVID here? No. And whatnot, you know? It happened in a lab in China that makes the Fauci over there, you know, who got it, who who basically got it on somebody to bring it over here and whatnot, Mm -hmm. which I think that's a lie and whatnot, you know, because I'm still trying to figure out how the hell do you get a virus on somebody to bring it to the U.S. to contain it and whatnot. See, that's the question that I have, but the answer you're not going to give me and whatnot. Which they try to deny at first, too. And they will always deny it. Every single time yep, they try that's to act like that was a conspiracy theory and they're going to act like it's a conspiracy. I was like, how the hell is that cons- a conspiracy theory? Yet CNN actually said it and whatnot. Why am I looking crazy when I basically saw 
what CNN put out and whatnot. See, those are the issues and whatnot. See, that's why I can't be around stupid people because I can't be in a room with them because I would slap every single one of them because they drive me fucking insane and whatnot. That's why I like to be not bothered by stupid people and whatnot. This is the reason why I can't talk to a Dr. Fauci and whatnot, because I would slap him for saying something stupid every single time when he when he say stupid thing, because it, it bothers me a lot and whatnot, you know, because I'd be like, bro, do you hear what you say sometimes? Well, you know the thing what? is, he knows better, but he's a puppet. And, and that's know. the thing. It's like all of them are. They're you puppets. know better. And that's and that's the crazy thing. I'd be like, yo, do you hear yourself talk? And and, and you know, I tell people it sounds like I'm random, but I'm not. But this topic has been burning with me the day I heard the president open his big mouth and saying the shit that he wanted to say and whatnot, you know, telling people that, you know, is I don't care about this. I don't care about that. You better go get back today or else and whatnot. The same thing with the Maryland governor also, too. You know, forcing people weekly tests and whatnot. You know, you know, you know, you cause more damage in testing someone versus as, you know, actually telling people to be healthy. You know, you don't do anything and talk anything about health. You're telling people that basically their health is in a vial and it's going to save everything. whatnot. I don't know who in the hell is not just not just believing it, but. To actually think, you know, that your health is in that vial, you must have lost your mind. They went as far to tell people you ain't got an immune system. I sat here and was like, yo, what kind of shit is this? That's like telling somebody you ain't got a brain and whatnot, you know, that you ain't got an immune system, you know. And I'm going to just, just end my thought, you know, because I feel like I've been going on and rambling and just talking. But, you know. This is a more spiritual war than anything else and whatnot, you know, and and those who have walked out from their jobs, I say all power to you and whatnot, you know, you know, all power to you, you know, because you've done something powerful that many people don't want to do and whatnot. And you believe not just with your own spiritual beliefs, but you will not let nobody overtake over your beliefs, how you choose on that free of will and whatnot. And that I have to respect and whatnot. I have to, you know, because you know who you are and you can walk out those doors every single day, you know? And there's a lot of people who are puppets because, you know, I got to pay for this, this, and this, and this, you know, because they move more like robots and rather don't see themselves as a decent human being and whatnot, you know? Because I told people at the end of the day, I want peace, you know? And I want everyone to have their own free will. But the government we are with, this fake democracy that they've been trying to groom us in the communism, they don't give a fuck about us. They never have, you know, because if they did, you know, you know, they'll tell people to eat healthier. You know, they yeah. wouldn't have so they wouldn't have so many goddamn, you know, fast food restaurants and whatnot. You know. That is correct. Yeah. You know? They wouldn't have all that stuff, you know, and and that's the biggest issue that's been going on. The biggest, you know. So I'm gonna just finally, final, my final words, my final thoughts, and whatnot. You know, we're in a spiritual battle. You know, everyone who's staying strong, keep strong. You know, if anybody needs spiritual people to talk to, reach out to good people who are willing to have a good conversation and help you out. So we're like I told you, we're all in this together spiritually, and we're gonna fight this and whatnot. Because if we prevail from this, I'm gonna tell you like this: 2030 is about to be a uh, this. This is nothing. Wait until 2030 hits and whatnot. You know, then we about to be really into you know a real real war and whatnot. You know, so I'm gonna just end my thoughts on that. And yeah. Um, Hopefully everything I said was very beneficial to everyone, you know, my thoughts, because this is something that I've been very, very passionate about because it's been a real pain of just hearing many stories. And, and before, you know, we close out and whatnot, I'm going to just let everyone know that I had four people that I know personally who's gotten the vaccine that has died from COVID and whatnot. 
you know? I I'm don't, sorry to hear that, that sir. Sorry yeah. for your losses. Four, sorry for your loss. Four and whatnot. And to add that now, it's actually six because suppose they said my uncle had COVID complications and whatnot, but yet he had a surgery previous before he even went into the hospital and whatnot, you know, which I don't think it was COVID and whatnot. I think he had a very poor procedure done and whatnot. Then basically they called it as COVID because basically they, you know, they put them on the, you know, the, the mask and, you know, and sedated them and all that stuff. So they had to call like how they call it yet. They're making money off of it. But, you know, I tell people I don't play around and whatnot. That's what I don't do. You know, I don't do that. You know, I love people and people know I love people, you know, and I care about people, you know, no matter, no matter what I say, no matter what I do, no matter how passionate I say it, and it don't matter who I keep calling, who I keep calling out, but I always love people, you know, but the thing about what it is, we have assholes that don't care a damn about people in which they confuse people to hate other people. And that shit needs to stop. And whatnot. So I'm ready to close out. And yeah, this was a good one. All right. Yes, sir. It was. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Iman. Again, to all our listeners out there, we want to thank you for all of the love and support. You all are the reason why we do this. If you haven't already, please make sure to go on YouTube, like, subscribe, share these. Uh, sessions. We definitely want to keep that content flowing around Beyonce's internet. (laughs) Um, Again, we thank you so much. Before we wrap up, I'm going to throw it to my guy PAT and my guy E-Man so they can go ahead and drop that info for some dope services that they offer. Mr. PAT, go ahead and drop that line, sir. ThePatChannel.com that's right. All my services, all my talents, uh, all my uh, products, etc., are all on thepatchannel.com. All my links to my social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, they are all on thepatchannel.com. Go there and you will see all of it. Like, follow, subscribe, share, all of that. Same thing you would do for the good, the bad, and the truth podcast. You must go to our YouTube page and subscribe, like, and share the videos as well. Please do us that solid. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Mr. E-Man, go ahead and shoot that information out, sir. All right, here we go. Um, you can you can kick me out on IG at Woo Athletics 56. It is W-O-O Athletics with an S five six five six. Um basically my email's there. My contact information is also in there. So you can definitely send me an email for any of queries for personal training and sports coaching and sports training. Yes, and sir. Holistic, yes. Oh, I apologize. And also, oh, no, also, also holistic cooking and also nutrition help. Thank you, sir. And for all of those out there, I do have a great new announcement I want to share with y'all. So there is a new business out for all of those who have holistic health needs from a tea and uh, herbal standpoint, herbal medicine standpoint. I am not talking about marijuana. Let me just clarify. These are teas, Mm -hmm. but the company is called Energy Tea Shop and it is I-N-N-E-R-G-Y. That's www.energy, I-N-N-E-R-G-Y-T-E-A-S-H-O-P, energy tea shop.com. This is my sister's brand new tea shop business. She is a certified life coach, spiritual guidance, 
and herbalist. She can put together almost any blend you need to, to help towards any ailment that you may be facing. Her shop is available online. It is definitely something that I support wholeheartedly because I myself have used some of these teas recently and I am already seeing major results. She's on Facebook. The group is on Facebook. I'm an admin there. Join us. We have the Energy Tea Support Shop. Again, to all our fans, we appreciate you. We thank you. From the good, the bad, and the truth, we say peace until next time. Peace. (laughs) But before we also go also to, also, I've actually created smoke blends and whatnot also to do. Okay, sir. It has no marijuana. It is all alkaline herbs. I'm actually in my test protocol. Um, asking That's others who. Okay, yes. all right. So I I've actually got really really inspired by, by um another alkaline um herbalist who um I met out in New York and basically I self I'm, I'm also I'm very self taught but I've actually created smoke blends because the simple fact is. I would love to get people off, not just marijuana, but also stop smoking cigarettes. So I created my own smoke blend that is almost actually as better than a cigarette. And I've also made three other blends that's almost not just better than weed, but almost has the same power and blissfulness towards as marijuana, by the way. Dope, dope, sir. Oh, Definitely man. will All be right. looking out for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's awesome stuff. All right. Y'all heard that, folks. We got all different services popping off here on the good, the bad, and the truth. As always, go to all those uh, sites that we dropped. And as Pat said, show that love, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate you. Thanks again. Once again, peace. And until next time, we look forward to talking to you all then. Peace. We out. Peace. We out.